Hey, Pi Finance family, welcome to this edition of Flip It with Samara. I am your host, Samara, the CEO and founder of Five Finance. So, Flip It, what is it, right? It's a show that we designed to flip the narrative on how do you view and use the power of tax planning in your personal and your business lives. So, here at Flip It, we created a safe space. We want you to ask your questions, be engaged. We want you to share your own experiences. In fact, we encourage it. So if you are in the comments now, please let us know that you're out there. Give us a hand wave emoji, say hello. Let us know that you're rocking with us on tonight, right? Um, so keeping with the mantra of our show, right? We believe that tax planning is not just for the wealthy. We believe that the wealthy don't start tax planning once they become wealthy, but yet use tax planning as a tool to grow their wealth. So what does that mean? That means that no matter where you are in your financial journey, you can start tax planning today. So as we go on tonight and we talk about some of the um, assets that we'll be focusing on, we'll also be sure to talk about some tips and strategies that you can use to protect those assets um, around tax planning, right? So again, we wanna encourage you um, to know that no matter where you are on your journey, you can start tax planning. So we will definitely be sharing some information on how you can connect with myself and how you can connect with our guests before the live is over, right? So you definitely wanna stay tuned until the very end. So let's see who's in the comments. I see Angelica's in the comments. Hello, Angelica. Hello, Samurai. Um, thank you all for joining this evening. I'm sure there are going to be some more people. Don't be shy. If y'all are in the comments, let me know that you're there. Give me a wave. Um, but tonight's guest is Katie. And Katie, I've had the pleasure of meeting in a Facebook group. And what I love about Katie is she is a solopreneur. She doesn't like the word coach. <laughs> But she definitely helps solopreneurs, um, you know, find their way and especially solopreneurs that are starting a little later in the game um, than some people um, that, you know, take a stake on this entrepreneurship journey. So I love that she is helping a, a group of people that I feel like sometimes are overlooked. Um, and But I'm going to let her talk to you a little bit more about what she does specifically and who she helps. So without further ado, I'm going to bring to the stage Katie. Hello, Katie. Hello, Samara. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Nervous and excited to be here. <laughs> Great. Don't be nervous. It's just going to be two women chatting it up. Um, so definitely uh, take this time to introduce yourself to the Five Finance family. If you can, please let them know um, who you serve and what you do. Okay, I'm Katie McCarthy, and I have the Solopreneur Cafe, which helps um, anybody who's self-employed. I like the word solopreneur. It covers a lot of things. Um, I help them sort out their personal financial needs. I am not... Um, an advisor, planner, salesperson. I'm more about uh, basically knowing how to DIY it because it seems to be overcomplicated for a lot of people. Mm. If not actually overcomplicated, they think it is. But um, I think I like the I like the five minute nuggets of wisdom because that's about all anybody's good for learning at a time anyway. <laughs> Absolutely. With everything else you got going on, yeah. Exactly. And that's why TikTok is so good right now. <laughs> people, mm. are, people are using that short attention span to still learn. That's why TikTok is so successful. Um, so, yeah, I'm all about it, too. Like, I'm all about the, the short, concise, hey, just give them the nuggets and then move on. So, thank you. Um, for introducing who you are and who you help. Um, tell us a little bit about the demographics of the entrepreneurs that come to you, because that is what I thought was most intriguing. Yeah, I, um, I was surprised when I heard from some people in their late 20s. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of um, what I'm coming across is, uh, especially with the younger crowd, there tends to be 
any kind of health issues that make a regular schedule and, you know, a traditional work environment not very good for them. Right. But other otherwise, most people are either they're just sick of the corporate culture or in my case, um, so I went, this was a couple of recessions ago. <laughs> I, I went solo when I lost a job I hated and um, decided, well, what do they call it? Uh, necessity entrepreneurship. Mm. So it was like, well, give this a go. And within about three months, I knew that I wasn't going to have a boss again. Yeah, listen, so I don't think you lost that job. I think you were freed. <laughs> That's exactly how I see it. Like I ran into the bad boss again, you know, the one who fired me and for reasons that were about 20% legitimate and 80% crap. Right, right. I was, I was bored with the job. I won't lie about that. <laughs> yeah. You but were... the rest of it. Oh, uh, yes, I was definitely freed. You were freed, Katie. You didn't lose anything. You gained a lot. That's what you gained. You gained your freedom. And then you gained yeah. this beautiful space where you're able to show others through your experience, like how to be successful at being self-employed, mm -hmm. being a solo entrepreneur, right? Um, yeah. So I feel like you've gained so much and in you gaining, you're actually giving back, which I think is awesome as well, because I'm a big supporter of community. And I try to do the same, right? Like I want to, that's why we have this show because I want to teach people um, some of the things that I've learned either through educating myself or through those tough lessons that you learn through experiences, um, which is how you gain wisdom. So mm -hmm. I definitely uh, commend you, right? For being able to use um, all of the skills that you've gained over the years to help others. I think that's really, really dope. Um, so, um, talking about like this entrepreneurship role, right? I know mm -hmm. that me and you chatted and we had conversations. You just shared, you know, that you have some people that are younger that come to you, but you also shared with me that you have some people that, um, you know, are almost, I guess, at the end of their career or maybe their mid career. So these people could be mm -hmm. in their forties, fifties. And at that point they're saying, yeah, I want to start a business. <laughs> Yeah, it seems I, I attract mostly the crowd that is like, you know, they've got student debt paid off, um, whatever age they've they've had their kids. Right. You know, and the kids may be three or 13 or 23. Right. <laughs> but um, so where they are in life is kind of uh, a little settled. Not actually, when I say it that way, I don't mean like with a partner. I just mean like they kind of. Right. They have a, a good picture of, of the path ahead on a personal level. And now they're kind of finding a different way on a professional level. Right. But as you know, uh, there are a lot of things that an employer takes care of for you or mm -hmm. provides for you mm -hmm. that trying to deal with on your own um, and figuring out whether you need it, if you do, how much, how do you go about it? Uh, what's the purpose of, you know, everything from life insurance to a 401k and things like that. That's right. Yeah. When I fired my boss, remember I shared that term with you, <laughs> when I fired yes. my boss, um, I had to think about those things because you're right. Like you're, you have to leave your medical plan. You have to leave whatever um, mm -hmm. life insurance you had at that company. Cause some organizations offer you life insurance should something happen to you. Um, um, med your, like I said, your medical, your, your retirement accounts, you have to figure out like, what am I going to do with that? So a mm -hmm. lot of things, when you become a solopreneur, entrepreneur, you're going to have to supplement, right? Um, mm -hmm. some things in order to ensure that you're still planning for your future. Um, I think that's the rut that a lot of entrepreneurs get into very easy is, they don't think about the future so much. They are so focused on getting their business up and running. Um, mm -hmm. And then we forget about the future. So I want to get into that tonight because we're okay. the, for the month of July, we're talking about assets, right? And so when I 
um, did the intro of what assets were. We talked about intangible assets and intangible assets, and we gave different mm -hmm. um, examples of those assets. So I feel like the Five Finance family understands what assets are, right? Um, but we want to play a game with you because you had some very valid points when we were talking um, mm -hmm. prior to the show, and the title of the game is called Do or Don't. Okay, so you, you're going to rock with me. You're going to play this game with me, Katie. <laughs> sure. It doesn't sound like there's really a wrong answer. Just uh, share the thought process behind the answer. There we go. That's there what it's go. about. So we're going to entitle this game, Do or Don't. And people that are watching in the audience, in the comment section, I want you to be engaged and I want you to put out a do or don't on how you feel about the uh, subject. Um, but we definitely are going to yield it to the expert of tonight um, and then I'll chime in as well to provide input. So our first do or don't question, renting versus buying. Do we rent? Don't we rent? Do we buy? Don't we buy? Do or don't? Renting versus buying. Oh my goodness. Well, um, there are a couple of really big deciding factors there. Um, mm -hmm. Number one is uh, where where you are. Okay. Um, so I lived in New York City for like 12 years. Mm -hmm. And it costs so much more to own than to rent. Mm. I wouldn't have even qualified for a mortgage for even half of what I would have needed. But uh, they have a, a phrase in the UK, um, in New York, I, I don't know if it's still in use, but it was called to feed the alligator, which to me sounds like something they'd have in Florida. <laughs> I don't but even it, know what it that means. means. <laughs> it means as the owner, uh -huh. uh, you are actually paying, your mortgage and the expenses are more than you're getting on the rental market. Oh, wow. Okay. So I may be paying $3,000, but it actually costs 5000 between the mortgage and the monthly fees on the condo and stuff. So in that case, and if you're going to be somewhere for a very distinct amount of time and it's right. not very long, uh, then you rent. Okay. Okay. You, you buy if it's going to be... Um, yeah, it was specifically New York City. I'm sorry, I'm seeing a comment about the New York house. Yeah, she said it's pricey. I, yes. I'm not sure. I'm going to guess it might be the same in some of the more expensive cities like San Francisco. Right. But I don't know if they have a term for it. Um, but I thought the, the alligator was a funny one. Um, really, I could think of so many other things than an alligator. Okay. So, um, so, so you but say. But otherwise, if you don't. But I think you're going to see again, which is, you know, a problem that every time there's a recession and it mm -hmm. hits the housing and all that. Um, well, the last one was bad because of the types of mortgages that were out there. Oh, right, right. But um, if you're in a, uh, yeah, because there's a whole variable rate and I don't know if balloon things are even available anymore. But I wouldn't mind moving. Mm -hmm. in maybe three years. I've only owned my house two, two years. Okay. I might move in two years. I might move in five years. The thing is having that flexibility about when mm -hmm. you can move is ideal because then you can pick, you know, okay, what are interest rates? Is it a buyer's or a seller's market? Mm -hmm. So you got, it's like if you got some flexibility uh, that way, then absolutely, mm -hmm. hands down own because oh, I, I do feel bad when I hear about like people who are not, who didn't get in uh, to home ownership until it was too late. Like now they try and right. it's just bad timing. Yeah. Yep. yep. Things so, go up and down. So they'll, they'll be able to get in. At, again, like it's not right now. <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. So what I'm hearing from you is it's a timing thing and it depends on like where you are in your life. Because mm -hmm. um, we had a lot of people that said bye, 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 right? But they may be in a situation in their life where it makes sense for them to buy because they're thinking more long term and they're looking at their home as an asset, as they should. 
um, especially mm -hmm. if you bought it at a lower price before this market went on steroids and all the prices of the homes have like doubled. Um, I, I could see how that would be beneficial um, right now yeah. in this market. I feel like if you're buying a home right now in this market, you're paying that premium price right now. Um, It'd be like so, buying a house in 2007 and then 2008 happened. That's right. So what the best case scenario is that you would have to hold on it, I believe, for at least 10 years to see you get a lot of equity or for that equity to continue to grow in that house because you're actually buying it at a premium price. And I feel like we're going to have a small recession. That's just me. Um I don't know if it's going to affect the housing market like it did because they're not doing the same practices. So they say, I don't know. I'm not in the finance area like a proven loan. So I don't know. Mm -hmm. But they say they're not doing the same practices that they were doing in 2007 that caused the home market to like crash. Um, but I'm no, but they've been known to rename things and right. still have the Yeah. So Correct. you never really know until it's, until it's too late till until it hits the fan. That's right. And so with that being said, five finance family, like understand, you know, timing and then understand where you are um, in your personal situation to answer that question for you. Right. Because for you, yeah. it may be a good time to buy, but then it also may be a good time to rent and maybe you buy a little later. Right. So yeah. this game is all about options. There's no right or wrong answer. We are just, um, you know, playing the game. So we can hear out both sides, right? So great, renting versus buying. Okay, do or don't. All right, so next one, do or don't. Now, this is a big one. And I say this is a big one because um, a lot of people are taking the non-traditional, non-traditional approach. So next one, for your college or mm -hmm. a skill, do or don't. Um, if you have a specific goal mm -hmm. and it requires, you know, you're going to have limits on you. If you don't have a degree, then you get a degree. Okay. If you're a wandering 18 year old <laughs> and you have no idea what you're going to, uh, you know, some of us still don't know what we're going to be when we grow up. Right. And, you know, even when, when I went, um, the tuition room and board was like 16 to 20, low 20s, mm -hmm. you know, the difference between freshman and senior year. Um, and I remember that being really rough. And so now that it's like 70, I have, I have no idea what people that are part. expected to do. But um, that, you know, I, it's so hard for me to imagine it not being a financial issue for every family, but I, I guess there's some out there that's not a big deal. Um, but if money is an object, as it is for, I really do think most of us, then um, you do my favorite plan. And now it's popular. It's funny because I've only started reading about this in recent years. My mother came up with the idea 25 years ago. She's a pretty smart lady, <laughs> which is if you're not focused and you're not necessarily academically inclined, at least not yet in your life. Right go do two years at community college and make sure you pick courses that are going to transfer. That's right. Your mom um, was a smart lady. <laughs> and, and by the way, this is something I regret not doing because I never anticipated needing it because I'm like, Oh, I'm not so many people end up in a medical related profession at mm. some point in their life that if you get biology, anatomy and physiology out of the way, even though they do have lab sessions and they're, right. they're a little difficult. It's uh, it's really nice not to have to do them as a prerequisite if you decide when you're 35 that you want to be a nurse. Right, right. And things like that. So, like, I would put that in my first two years if I had the option, along with, you know, just your general stuff. Because right. even in a four-year college, you don't hit your, um, uh, your major courses until your junior year anyway. Correct. That's so, right. That's right. Yeah. So, if you can get the equivalent of one and a half to two years worth of credits out of the way. And then later, you know, down the line, 
it's not so intimidating to go back to college. You, you don't have to sit there and go, oh my God, doing this part-time, it's going to take me eight years to get a degree. Right. Right. Uh, because I would look at that time horizon and be like, well, that's a horrible sinking feeling. If you can shorten that to four years and then even shorter, if you really want to um, bust it out, it's a, it's a lot less intimidating. I agree. We got, so we, we have oh. a lot of people, people say like, it depends on the person. Some people say go to I college. Uh, Don't waste your money if you're not academically inclined. Right, right. And I, I mean, I went to college with so many of them. And then uh, between, for my junior year, I believe it was, there was a double leap in tuition. So it had gone up wow. like, uh, I know, it's still small peanuts, compared to now, but right. uh, usually the increase in tuition room and board was 1000 to $1,500 um, each year. And then that particular year, I think it was 1990, because I'm really old people, <laughs> it, uh, it went up 2500 to 3000 Wow. Like across the board, it wasn't just my college. It was and I saw, right. yeah, And I saw a, a lot of kids, or their parents were like, you know what? You're only pulling C's and D's. You're just going to party and that's it. I'm not paying that money to do Absolutely. it. Absolutely. And I think And they pulled their kids out of college. Yeah, and I think that's smart, right? Like yeah. if you're not using it as an asset, right, to help open doors mm -hmm. for you then absolutely, then it becomes a money pit. So it actually does more harm than good. And mm -hmm. I personally am on the fence on this one. Um, so because of my profession, right? And I love that you said mm -hmm. it depends on your goals, like what you're trying to do. So if you're going into a profession that you absolutely know that you need to have education in order to advance in that profession, then go mm -hmm. to college, make the investment, but be smart about the investment. So I love that your mom told you, yeah, go to maybe a technical college or a two-year college and then transfer, make sure it's accredited, make sure you can transfer those credits over to a four-year college because that will save you money. So that is one thing that you can do for a finance family. Maybe you tell your kids, hey, go to that community college. I just took my son um, to Athens Technical College today. And I was like, mm -hmm. hey, this is a smart thing to do. Like, you want to go into drafting, go to the technical college for two years. You do your courses online. You can stay at home. You save money and still work. And then transfer to a four-year college later, right? Um, the, the cost is astronomically lower, okay? Because we, we mm -hmm. toured Kennesaw State. And we toured SCAD of all places. I, 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 if I had pearls, I would have clutched my pearls uh, when I saw <laughs> the tuition. I was like, am, am I buying a home? What am I doing here? <laughs> it was, it is ridiculous. So, and I told him, I said, I don't mind investing in your future, but this has to be an investment with a return. Okay, like I'm not going to yeah. send you to this school that's going to cost me seventy thousand dollars plus just for you to party. Like that's not happening. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so I think we as parents, and then you know, we also need to think about like what are our goals, what are we trying to accomplish, and and what how much time, right? I'm glad you mm. mentioned the time. Um, value as well because how much time do we have to accomplish that goal but we have to make sure that we approach it in a very strategic in a very smart and informed manner so I, I 100 percent agree with you it definitely depends on the person and then the goals that you're trying to achieve so kudos no, to your that, mom specifically your your son I mean he's coming out of you know what the pandemic hit in the middle of high school for him then, mm -hmm. right? That's right. So there's a certain element of um, social development isn't quite the word, but the, the normal way you go about things. So at a time when he might have gone out and gotten his first paid job right, and started to learn those skills about how you behave in the workplace, right, it really wasn't a thing to go out. You know, it was like, if you can afford not to work in a public facing job, you don't. Right. Right. So I, yeah, so I think you're um, basically your 17 to 20 year olds are kind of um, uh, 
going to end up taking a different route or there's stuff that they still mm-hmm. have to do that is normally done by their age, but because of, you know, weird world circumstances. I, I absolutely agree. Yeah. It's going to be, it's going to look different, uh, which is why I think Angelica is like team skills because I feel like a lot of people are going towards the route of, you know what? I can make money doing X, Y, and Z. And I don't necessarily have to go the traditional route that my parents did. But we have one we have one question I want to make sure I get oh, to. Sure. Um, so Marie Mitchell. Hello, Marie. Thank you for joining. Um, she says, what do you say to a professional student? Oh, my God. I know the type. Okay. I, I, have, I have a master's degree. Uh-huh. And uh, I've never used it. <laughs> it's, a, it's a master's in applied linguistics. But my reason for doing it was perhaps, I don't know, kind of pathetic. I lived in the UK from okay. uh, 1992 to 2000. Uh-huh. And I had uh, endless problems of people taking my undergraduate degree seriously. I mean, uh-huh. I'd go on interviews and they'd be like, oh, that's right. You just basically buy your degree. That's what they called it because we pay tuition. Oh, wow. So they figured as long as you pay your tuition, you're going to get your degree. And I knew so many people who did not get their degree because, including my sister, because she could not pass the foreign language requirement. We went to um, uh, we went to Jesuit University, so they had a really strong uh, core requirement that included a language. And she just has this block. And she's tried to get around it since, like, how about can I do a computer language? Can I do sign language? You know, anything, mm-hmm. but she just doesn't do language well, which is so funny being, you know, I get the master's in linguistics. But, um, you know, so she paid all the money, put in all the time, and didn't have a degree after that. She has since gone back and gotten a BSN in nursing. But um, she didn't do that until, when did she graduate? She was like 36, 37 when she finished. Wow. Anyway, yeah, so, uh, yes, there are those who are way too good at putting it off. I know that one of the popular things when I, so I graduated college in 92, Mm -hmm. and the job market sucked. Now, Mm -hmm. people say that all the time, but we had a pretty bad recession that was delayed a bit from the 87 stock market crash. Mm. So in, by 90, 91, you were seeing it on the real estate values and 92. In fact, that's part of where I kind of learned a lot because I'm one of those weird people who actually pays attention, <laughs> even when they're, you know, a self-absorbed 21 year old or whatever. But um, I noticed a lot of articles. I'm talking newspapers and magazines again, pre-internet <laughs> about how people had turned their hobbies and interests into a business right because all these people who were not used to being on unemployment or you know suddenly grateful that unemployment existed they never thought they'd have to collect it you know it had a big stigma on it before then Mm. and that's when it lost its stigma uh or at least a, a chunk of it and you know so it was always in the back of my mind this when the economy tanks you can turn it's an opportunity to uh make lemons out of lemonade or lemonade out of lemons. And, uh, but everybody, I just remember so many kids from college going, I think I'll just go do a master's degree. And I'm like, you don't even know what you want to do yet. <laughs> so you spend All more you want to do is put, put things off another two or three years <laughs> right. by staying in school because that's your comfort zone. You're racking up more debt. Nah. Yeah. 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 And you know, cause it's even more expensive, but that's I great. just remember thinking, Oh, well I'll, I'm just going to go buy, I'm going to go get this um, work permit for six months in the UK. Off I go. I'm there going to go, go and live a dream. Right. And and that's uh-huh. what you did. Like you, you were living the dream where as, you know, people that are professional students, I guess my question is like, what's your end game, right? Like I can't see myself um, racking up that much <laughs> debt and then me not getting a return on that investment at all. Um, Mm -hmm. so I usually give people like a rule of thumb, like whatever debt you have incurred, um, as you know, to advance your education, then the first job that you find, you should be able to target a salary, right? 
that mm -hmm. doubles that debt, okay, so that you're able to pay that debt off in a few years versus 20 years. <laughs> so that's how you should be able, looking at it. Um, so if you can't target a salary that is going to double, um, you know, the, double the amount of the debt. So let's say your salary uh, should be 100000 if your debt for college was fifty. That's what I'm saying. So yeah. look at it from that aspect because that will help you even pay that debt off faster. Because all that debt is doing is a accumulating interest and penalties or whatever else um, the government decides to tax on there. Or if you went to a private firm, definitely interest. So um, definitely try to pay it off as soon as possible. So Marie, I'm to also answer a big your... fan. Oh, sorry. Go no, ahead. go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say, I'm a big fan of, and I believe they still do it. I know Starbucks does it. There are a few other employers out there that mm -hmm. like pay your tuition. Yes, they do. Absolutely. And I, I haven't had a reason to look into those programs, but I don't know. To me, the idea of being a barista is intimidating. <laughs> Remember all the recipes <laughs> that, and the last thing you want to do is ruin somebody's morning cup of coffee. Oh man, because they're already, they're already at a bad they're already, they're, they're jonesing, they're just like, give me my coffee and you right. get it wrong. And it's like, right. you just ruined, my whole day is screwed up now. The whole day is ruined. <laughs> Yeah, Why but did no, you they... put oat milk in this? I don't want oat milk. Right. It's not a cow. Right. <laughs> or whatever the thing is. But, but you're, um... you're right. There are companies that will pay for your um, tuition. And so I actually took advantage of that program when I worked. Oh, you for, did? Yeah, when I worked for Caterpillar. Um, so, yeah, so you only have to get some companies and they have it written up in different ways. So mm -hmm. be sure that you understand how much time you have to give back to the company. Right. That's mm -hmm. first and foremost. Um, and then make sure that it is a degree that aligns with your career, because that's usually the second biggest thing that they look at. OK, like, does this make sense? So if I'm an accountant, they're not going to pay for my degree in zoology. Does that make sense? Right. Like, yeah. how the heck am I going to use that for the business? So um, it usually has to align with whatever your career path is. And then you usually have to give back so much in time. Um, I think mm -hmm. at Caterpillar, I had to give back like two years, but I've worked for other companies where they're like, oh, you got to stay with us five years. So they they want to make sure that they get a return on that investment. Yeah. Well, that's fair. Yep. And so, yeah, be picky. Yep, absolutely. But good, good point. All right. So the last question of do or don't in the game of do or don't, cars, right? So leasing versus buying right do i lease do i own do i buy do i even need a car <laughs> there's a bit that's actually my favorite i i had to i recently asked myself that question and i got mm -hmm. rid of my car now i um i think it might be considered a house hack mm -hmm. i have a co-owner roommate okay also known as my mom Okay. But I put it that way because we don't financially support each other. Uh -huh. um, we don't, um, neither one of us needs any caretaking yet. Okay. I'm more than happy to provide it for two years because, you know, that's how long she changed my diaper. I feel like I owe her that. <laughs> 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 then the others can kick in. I I'm the oldest of four. So um, anyway, uh, she has a, 2019 car which we're delighted with if you think about what you know 2020 was like and then trying to get a car in the last year and a half has been awful right. so she did it, her timing was very good on that now my car is pretty old it was 2005 honda crv okay and i ended up selling it to a, a friend who um like I, I felt good i probably could have gotten more money for it but i'm like i know because of where you live and how you guys drive that you're probably it's it won't be long before you have to uh replace the shocks right because timing wise they were due to be replaced but condition wise they weren't but i figured that was probably going to change quickly and i i wasn't looking to stick them you know they're friends right right and i know and i normally avoid anything to do with money with friends but um i just also didn't want to deal with selling my car right so you know, it was a trade-off and um you know, it all worked out just fine. <laughs> oh, except when I was driving to Denver to deliver it, which is like four hours away. 
the actual glass, not not the whole wing mirror, but the little mirror panel on it, flew off. And I'm like, well, the car was in perfect condition when I got on the road. So you didn't do that, Katie? I was 50 miles from home, and the thing flew off. And I'm like, I owe you about 12 bucks. Right, right, right. <laughs> Special discount. Sorry. Oh, wow. So, uh, so yeah, I, I think this is also one, like, it just depends on your lifestyle, right? Like, um, yeah. maybe you live in an but area. That's what I did. I right? assessed my lifestyle and realized what was going on. Because, okay, so, again, all these decisions are very individual. And right. I looked at, since I moved here, I'm in the middle of nowhere. It's right. four hours one way to Denver and four hours another way to um, Salt Lake City. And there are a bunch of little towns, and I'm like the most major place in between the two right um, on the uh, western edge of Colorado and um, so for me to go anywhere by car is going to be hours of driving I don't do that well I get road hypnosis mm. fall asleep at the wheel all that stuff Oof, that's scary yeah it is and if I'm alone in the car so if I'm driving solo it's a problem right um, podcasts help <laughs> absolutely yep. yeah they they keep me engaged um yep. but uh I'm like so if i'm not alone chances are i can be using you know my mother's car because right. she's most likely to be the other person in the car right I'm like and then i found myself like making a point of using my car once a week so it wouldn't you know get rusty I'm like, right i just need to get rid of this this is more of a burden than it is an asset see so again you have a experience where it was like mm -hmm. listen my mom has a car we're, we're living together so worst case scenario if i need to get around i have that as an option yeah. um so again it's a very like you said it's an individual assessment that you have to take for yourself um i can personally say that living in a rural area right you probably are going to need a car <laughs> because you're going to need to be able to get yeah. around especially if you don't have someone else um who you can rely yeah. on to provide that transportation but then reliability is a really big okay. deal so when i see about oh yeah i'll just downgrade a car and i'm like you and your husband have you know three kids right don't I wouldn't I wouldn't get an old car no you need something um, safe right it, safe you don't want to be broken down at the side of the road That's with right. three you know hot miserable kids right. um for both safety their safety as well as you know now right. you're a sitting duck um in this wonderful day and age <laughs> so right. uh, yeah, there are I a lot of things to look at where it's like if I needed a new car right now, I would probably lease as short a term as I could mm -hmm. because I think it's going to take a while. Only because I think it's going to take a while for that whole supply chain and inflation to just mm. settle the hell down. And until it settles down, I don't want to make big purchases. So I'm not mm. planning to move. I'm not planning to buy a car. Now, um, I, I love that you said that because... My finance family, I heard, hope you heard her. So what she's talking about, the supply chain issue, what's that doing right now for the price of cars is it is inflating cars beyond the MSRP. I mean, you have dealerships that are tacking on 20000 plus on the value or the cost of the car, right? Um, and selling those to average day working Joes like myself and yourself. And so what Katie is suggesting is, okay, if you need a car, right? Because maybe you need a car, you abs your, maybe your other car died, you absolutely have to get a car. So she says, lease that car, right? And when you're leasing, yes, you have to be mindful of the mileage you put on the car. But if you're needing it just to get you back and forth to work, that should not be a big issue if you have to travel for a long distance trip to rent a car, okay? But what she's saying is lease that car and then when the market starts to correct itself and prices get back down to normal, right, and it's no longer the wild, wild west, then you make that investment and you buy that car because what that's going to do is it's going to give you better equity value in the car. Um, you purchase a car right now, there's a big chance that you're going to be upside down, meaning that you're going to mm -hmm. owe more on the liability than the cars really were. 
that makes sense? I hope that helps somebody. So thank you so much, Katie, for playing this game. You have been a lovely contestant on Do or Don't. <laughs> I know I, I know I gave some unexpected answers, but I actually kind of addressed. Um, uh, I'm seeing a comment coming up about Uber. Um, I oh. can't remember. You were mentioning um, Athens and stuff. I can't remember if you're in Georgia, but I am. I, I may have told you about that friend of mine in Atlanta who uh, relies on Uber. There's oh. such a shortage of drivers. Yes. That what used to co cost him. 20 bucks for an oh. uber ride uh, the the surge or whatever you want to call it he right. can rarely get it below 70 bucks yeah i'm sure which means he just skips the ride because he's like no i'm not spending 150 bucks round trip to deal with right you know and, and again but, all of that um is being affected by our market Right. Like because mm -hmm. of the market that we're looking at, the supply train constraints that we're seeing, it's just not a lot of vehicles out there on the road, not a lot of drivers that are wanting to, you know, mm -hmm. put their vehicles out there on the road because they're like, what happens if something happens in my vehicle? <laughs> what am I going to be left uh, with? So, I've been hearing about um, e-bikes so much lately. Yep, those are really big in Atlanta. Yep. Yeah, they. Uh, um, the fact that I'm starting to hear about them yep. when, you know, it's not in my sphere of interest. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it could be, but, um, you know, I, I'm familiar with e-bikes as, oh, they're good for about 15, 20 miles before you need to charge them. Charge but them I understand again. that's gotten a whole lot better. Oh, yeah. As, as the technology, you know, um, grows or, or it becomes um, more available to, to the average Joes, I think yeah. they definitely make more investments to improve on the technology. So I feel like there's going to become a time where most of everything that we use for transportation will be electric some way, somehow. And so I'm just waiting for the day because we, I also know that what we currently use, like our fossil fuels, right? They're yeah. just that. They're not a renewable energy source. <laughs> so it's going to run out one day. Um, there are only so many dead dinosaur, dinosaurs under there, but it's <laughs> right. still surprising that we have oil if you consider the way we've treated it for That's the past right. 100 years. That's so. right, right? So... But this was an amazing conversation. I'm so glad that you came on and just gave a different perspective um, because a lot of things that you um, have shared that worked for you, right, um, definitely probably connected with some people in the audience. And it's different from what I've shared because, again, we're individuals on this journey, right? And we have different mm -hmm. paths that we're taking and we take the path that works best for us. So thank you so much for sharing and opening up. My I think, pleasure. Yeah, it was truly, truly amazing. So tell the people how to get in contact with you. Um, do you have a website that they can visit? Yep, I'm at solopreneurcafe.com. Yeah, there we go. There, I see it on the screen. I love it. Um, there's a, just below the picture you see there, that you can sign up for my emails. I am uh, not big on filling your email box, so you have nothing to worry that way. And I, if you sign up, there's a little check, uh, a checklist for five minute money moves. And I actually have that, you, you can find the link on my site for like my Facebook group. And I put one out there every Monday. Uh, in fact, the one I put out this week was about, um, how to keep your debit card safe Ooh. because I, I don't know. Um, so far it's just anecdotal. I've not been able to Google anything successfully, but uh, people who've never had a problem with their debit card being hacked are having problems, Ooh, that's including me. Yep. And I, I only ever use it in an ATM. I've never used it online. And somehow my number got used on Amazon and I'm like, I guess you're supposed that was one of those trial transactions to see if the card would work. Yeah. But yep. I just happened to catch it real fast. It's it's and, happening because it definitely yeah. happened to me too. But it was and specifically debit and debit sucks because it's your bank balance. It's connect right. Right. And you don't you don't get the um 
you don't get the fraud coverages on your debit card as uh-huh. they're not as good as what you get on a credit card. Right. Correct. And so it's, it's happening. So I'm glad that you have that out there. So Five Finance Family, make sure that you go to her website um, and make sure that you uh, sign up for that five minute bite because that is definitely something that is going on. I can attest to it. I have never had my debit card hacked. Like, I shouldn't say never, but it's been at least 15 years, maybe 20 years. And all of a sudden it happened. And the only thing that I can mm-hmm. think of was, did they get it when I used it at the gas station? Like, I, I really don't even know how they yeah. got it, to be honest. Um, but it's definitely happening and it's unfortunate. So any way that we can better inform ourselves so that mm-hmm. we are protected, I'm all for it. So thank you for sharing that. That is amazing and thank you so much for being a guest on tonight i hope that you enjoyed it um i know that it was a lot of engagement in the audience so they appreciate your time as well um so i'm going to bid you adieu you can tell the five finance family uh goodbye but i'm going to ask you to wait backstage until i wrap everything up okay i'll hang out so thanks for coming guys (laughs) see you katie All right, Five Finance family, thank you so much for um, rocking with us on this Tuesday evening. I appreciate all your comments, all your questions. Um, Please be sure to continue to follow us, like our videos. Um, You can absolutely subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can keep this good content in front of you week over week. Um, You can also make sure that you are downloading our podcast, right? So you can listen to this conversation while you are in your car, um, driving to work, or while you're at the office trying to get some work done. And feel free to connect with us. You can visit our website at www.fivefinance.com. You can connect with us there by booking a free consultation. Um, So we still do tax planning, uh, we're still doing taxes and accounting as well. So you can book a consultation that applies to you. Um, And then also, you know, follow us on social media. We don't mind being stalked on social media. So follow us on Instagram and Facebook um, if you are on those social media platforms, right? Um, so again, Five Finance Family, thank you for coming on um, tonight. Oh, to mo- next week's guest, before I forget, we are going to have a guest next week. Miss Glenda Walker is going to be joining us, and she is going to help us uh, find the money. So show me the money. How can I get funding I need for my business? Um, so you definitely want to be in attendance there if you are an entrepreneur or someone who is trying to either start your business or grow your business. We always need funding, right? Um, So you definitely want to make sure you tune in for that. So again, thank you so much, Five Finance family. Uh, It's always appreciative or appreciated um, that when you log on, and I really, really appreciate your engagement. Um, But until next time, you all have a blessed and wonderful Tuesday evening. We'll see you soon.